Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing another tips video. I'd like to do these more often, but recently there's not been a ton of new stuff, so it's been hard to find things to cover. But I've got some good tips for you today. Before we start though, I just want to let you all know that I'm going to be doing another giveaway, but this time it's for a copy of Star Wars Squadrons. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed and leave a comment, and I really appreciate all of you who do. More details are in the description. Now let's get started. So I'm going to start off with a few simple ones, but there's a ton of settings to change in the settings menu. So at least in my experience, it's easy to overlook some really useful ones. So the first one is to increase the star map sensitivity from the default setting. So this controls the sensitivity of zooming in and out on the star map with the scroll wheel. By default, I believe it's set on 30, but I really prefer using 60, and I could see even higher sensitivities being useful. It's saved me a lot of scrolling since I found this setting, and hopefully this helps you too. Another setting that I found useful recently is the look at target setting. So by default, your character looks at whatever ship you have targeted, and it's a pretty aggressive effect. You can always press Alt-T to untarget them, but I prefer being able to keep someone targeted and still fly in a different direction from them. Especially if you're doing stuff like trying to avoid missiles, you're going to want to be able to see where you're going, and not deal with the hassle of your view being pulled towards the ship that you're targeting. This option could be useful in some cases, but I personally found it really annoying when I had it on. My attention was brought to this next setting pretty recently when I was messing around with the turrets on the hammerhead and was having some issues making precise movements with those turrets. So it happens that by default you have pretty big dead zones set for controlling your ship and aiming turrets even if you're using a mouse. If you don't know what dead zones are, it comes from joysticks, where you want there to be an area in the middle of the joystick's range where it says it's centered even if the joystick is slightly off center just to keep it from moving around from slight accidental movements or just from hardware that isn't perfect. When you're using a mouse though, these dead zones are a little less useful. I keep them on a little bit for controlling my ship just to help with maneuvering in spaces like hangars, but with turrets there's not much reason to keep them on, at least not as high as they have them set by default. Moving on from settings, one of the new things in this most recent update was the ability to buy colored Moby glasses in New Babbage. However, like a lot of new things in Star Citizen, I've had issues when trying to use these. I've tried to equip these twice, and both times I ended up not having a Moby glass when I logged in later, and I had to do a character reset. Thankfully, character resets are a lot less disruptive these days since you keep your in-game earned chips now, but they're still a pain to do. So in the future this will probably be fixed, but for now, such a small cosmetic change I don't think is really worth the risk of all the glitches that it can cause. So this next tip can be useful for people who have a lot of ships. I like to have uniform loadouts of weapons on my ships, but oftentimes the stock versions of ships have a lot of variation in their weapons. For example, the Buccaneer comes with two laser repeaters and three ballistic Gatling stock. So I ended up switching out all the guns on the Buccaneer for laser repeaters, but I still found a use for the expensive size 4 Gatling that came with it on my Hornet here. This is useful even beyond that though, because right now you can switch out components in ships that you're currently in. This is definitely not intended, but it means that if you want to save some money you can buy a few top tier shields or quantum drives or other components like that and just switch them to and from the ships that you're using at the moment. Now again, this is a bug and it sometimes takes a few times to equip your stuff if you're doing it this way, but it saves you from buying a lot of duplicate components. And I find that components are now the thing that you're most likely to lose in a patch or a character reset, so I try to spend as little money on these as possible. The next tip I have is pretty simple. Don't use fighters for long distance quantum travel. Now there's always exceptions to this because the limitation with fighters and other small ships is just their tank size. There's plenty of fast size 1 quantum drives, but the ships normally just don't have enough fuel to make any sort of long range jump, and sopping in the middle of a jump for fuel is a massive time sink. However, most ships with size 2 quantum drives have plenty of fuel to equip fast drives and make multiple jumps across the system. My go-to quantum drive is the size 2 Crossfield. It's one of the fastest drives without going overboard on the fuel consumption, and it's not too expensive at 60,000 credits. And even if you only have small ships, you can just plop it in the loner freelancer that seems to be sticking around for quite a while, and then you have a pretty fast ship for those long jumps. Quantum drive is now off. This next tip is one that can be very useful for miners, but unfortunately it's a bug and it will be fixed in 3.11, so use it while you can. So I saw on Reddit that if you get far enough away from a mineable rock, but not too far so it doesn't despawn, you can actually change its composition. Now you can't change the type of rock that it is, so you're not going to get a quantanium rock from a non-quantanium rock, but you can change the mineral percentages, which can be really nice if you find a bad quantanium rock. 
So the best way I've found to get the timing right, because you don't want to waste too much time going far away from the rock, is to set your throttle limit right around 500 meters per second, and then just lock your ship's pitch and yaw with right shift, so that you don't have to worry about drifting off course. And since we're going to be going backwards, try to have the back of your ship pointing out of the asteroid field just to avoid any issues. Then I bring the ship up to speed, and once it gets to 500, I count to 30. Once I've counted to 30, I just turn on cruise control and go back to the rocks. Be careful not to run into them though. Make sure to use your scanners to judge the distance to them and make sure you remember to press right shift again once you can see the rocks so that you can maneuver again. And remember, the prospector takes a long time to slow down. So in this example I actually ended up with a worse percentage on the rock, but you can get really lucky. And it also saves you from having to go find other rocks. So if you find a quantanium rock but it just isn't the percentage that you were looking for, then this trick is one you could try. So this next tip is mainly for miners as well, but it can also be useful for traders. So I really like Port Olazar since it's one of the most convenient places to retrieve ships from and land. It's also really convenient to sell your mined cargo there since it's really close to Yella, which is where I like to mine. However, because of its open design, your ship is especially vulnerable to pad rammers here. Even if you're pretty fast at landing and selling your stuff, your ship is still sitting on the pad for a good minute, which is plenty of time for someone to mess with your ship. And unfortunately, griefers love to blow up prospectors. So the way you can avoid this is by getting your ship impounded on purpose. Now if Olazar is dead and there doesn't look like there's any risk, then go ahead and land normally and save yourself the 500 credit impound fee or the 5 minutes of waiting. But if it's pretty populated, then go ahead and call the station just to save your ship in case of a 30k, and then go hover over a pad that you weren't assigned to. Now you're still somewhat vulnerable to being rammed while that timer ticks down, but since you don't even have to be landed, you have a much better chance of avoiding someone who's trying to get you. This can be useful for cargo hauling as well, and it's actually kind of convenient since they just drop you in the station with your ship stored once that timer hits zero, and you can sell whatever you're selling as usual. So hopefully with this tip you avoid some frustration with those people who are really bored with the game and can find nothing better to do than just ram people. So one annoying change in 3.10 is that it seems to me like the AI love to use their missiles more than ever before. This couldn't have come at a worse time though, since it seems like there's something going on with the way damage from missiles is calculated as well. Quite a few times this patch I've been flying a medium fighter like the Saber, but I've just gotten deleted by just a few missiles from the AI. So this is only an issue for missions that aren't ECN alerts because the NPCs are solely targeting you, but there's a few things you can do to avoid being obliterated if you're trying to do some of the higher value bounties or authorized execution warrants with smaller ships. So one thing you can do is just use missiles on the target yourself. I never used to do this because I prefer just shooting them as it's more fun for me, but if you take out the target at range you can deal with the other enemies a lot more easily, or just run from them since the call to arms bonus you get from killing them is pretty small. Also, after completing the mission, the AI sometimes just seem to not care that you're there anymore, like these guys here, so they can be really easy to deal with. Another thing you can try is you can try to stop them from locking onto you by using your afterburner to get out of their line of sight, but that can be pretty hard with the low time it takes to lock smaller sized missiles. So these are a few things you can do to try to make this a little bit more bearable, but I'm just hoping that 3.11 brings some refinements to missiles because they're really annoying right now. One other thing to do with missiles is the cinematic missile camera. I didn't know about this, but if you turn on cinematic cameras and hold down the missile button even after you've launched your missiles, you get to watch them in all their overpowered glory. What a feature. So this last tip can save you a bit of time in specific scenarios. So I always used to go land at a station after a long quantum travel just to make sure I wouldn't have to do it over again if the server happened to crash. However, you don't even have to do the landing part at all if you just want to save your spawn to that station. As soon as you request for landing and you get assigned a pad, you're good to go. This is especially useful if you're just going to that station to change ships because you can just quickly fly by the station and then hit that backspace key to be teleported inside. So that's all I have for this video, but I hope something in there was new or useful to you. These videos do take me a while to make though, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd like or subscribe. And remember, I'm doing a giveaway of Star Wars Squadrons, so be sure to enter in that if you want a chance to win it. Anyway, thanks for watching.